everyone thank you so much for joining um i'm going to just take us through the cash flow patterns and this will be for only 30 minutes uh, i don't want to keep us for long so i will try my best to make sure that we stick to to 30 minutes i will introduce myself my name is nyara zochauruva um i run with a project that i call my money project and I'm a financial education instructor. So simply saying I'm a teacher of money as my, as my daughter calls me. So today we want to go into cash flow patterns. I need to minimize this one. And my first question, you can type the answer in the chat box, just so I know you are with me here. I want you to tell me what you understand by the term cash flow what is cash flow so I'll, I'll stop sharing for now so i can see the chat um what is cash flow from your own understanding you can type in the chat if you want to speak out you can also uh, unmute yourself and speak but what is cash flow from your understanding I don't see any cash flow, where money is going. Yes, Stephanie. So where money is going um, and it can actually be in or out. I see your hand, Sydney, you want to come in? What is cash flow? Uh, I think you just took the words right out of my mouth. Uh, yeah, yeah, it, I think it is uh, the money that's coming in also uh, the money that is going out and you see where you stand between the outflow and the inflows. Correct. Well done. Yes, and Tawanda is also saying it's the flow of money in and out of your life. Yes, this is um, all your answers are correct. So let me just continue with my with my presentation. There we go. So you are right in that cash flow is basically movement of money. So it can be inflow or cash outflow. And cash inflow is when money flows into your life and cash outflow is when money flows out of your life. There is a common question that people ask uh, and you hear a lot of times people are saying, where did all my money go? And this question, it's asked not because money has been stolen or uh, someone dropped it or something, but it just shows that people do not have control over their money or the cash flow pattern of their money. It shows that instead of them controlling their money, the money is controlling them. And so, as I've just put here in my notes, if you are not a master of your money, you will always wonder where it went. That is why we want to plan for our money to let it know where it should go so that it doesn't control us. When money starts controlling you or me, um, you will find that we start to worry a lot. We have sleepless nights, blood pressure all over the place. But when we control our money, we become masters of our money. And um, this last point, I love it because someone said it to me and I love says money is a good servant, but it's a bad master. So we must all learn to master our money. So in mastering our money, there is what I want to call a personal financial statement. If you are a business or if you know of a business, uh, we hear that auditors are coming to look at the books or to, ass to assess the financial statement of the company. But we want to move away from the business and to focus on you. Do you have a financial statement? And what does it look like? So for some, if you're not an accountant, I would understand you may probably not know all these terms, but I will help today so that everyone understands what your financial statement is all about. So a financial statement has two parts to it, the income statement and the balance sheet. Income statement 
is where we record the income and the expenses. So when we talk of income, we are talking of money coming into your life uh, and that is inflow. So it's inflow and it is money received, especially on a regular basis in exchange for providing a good or a service. So when you do that, you receive money and we call that an income. Examples are probably salary, um, if, if, if you, or they can be consultancy fees, commissions, um, it could be a wage, you know, it could be, it could be anything, but as long as money is coming to you, maybe sales, profits, things like that. And then when we talk of expenses, this is money flowing out of your life. So you look, when you see this, when the arrow is pointing up, it shows that it's inflow, cash inflow. And when the arrow is pointing down, it means money is coming out of our lives. And um, we're moving on to the balance sheet. We have assets and we have liabilities. Um, I'm reading from my book. I don't know if you can see my, if you can see me, but if not, I'll still share it at the end. This book, it's called The Wealth Builders Toolkit. Um, it's my second book. And in it, these definitions are clearly outlined. So I'll read what I said are assets. So assets, uh, these put money into your pocket, whether you are working or not. So assets bring money into your life. So that's why you see also there is a an arrow there. And assets, we are talking about maybe if you own a taxi business, your taxis are assets because they are bringing money into your life. Or maybe you have a, a home, a rental home, a house that you build, and, and you have, uh, and you have uh, tenants in that house. So that becomes an asset because it's giving you money. Maybe you have stocks on the stock market. Those are your assets because they are bringing money into your life. So assets are um, basically items that bring money into your life. And liabilities, of course, are the opposite in that they generate expenses which take money out of your pocket. And um, I just want you to also see the size of the box where the income is and the size of the box where assets are. So it's basically to say for you to have a healthy financial statement, your income should be more than your expenses and your assets should be more than your liabilities. But oftentimes we find that that is all mixed up. And when that happens, we end up struggling with our money. So it's the relationship between the income statement and the balance sheet that ultimately determines your cash flow pattern. So moving on, I think you have seen this diagram over and over as I share it, uh, but this is a concept that was uh, designed or a theory from Robert Kiyosaki. Um, and uh, Robert Kiyosaki is also a personal finance guru, and he shares these three different cash flow patterns. So you will see that there's a cash flow pattern for the poor, there's a cash flow pattern for the middle class, and then there's a cash flow pattern for the rich. We will go into detail uh, as I focus on each one of them, but it's understanding the differences that will help you know where your money flows. So if you can see uh, the poor and the middle class, they have jobs uh, which give them the income, but the income of the poor immediately is converted to expenses and out it goes out of their life. Uh, the middle class also have jobs, the salary comes, but this one is more sophisticated because it goes and gets liabilities which generate expenses and out it goes into their lives. And uh, the rich, on the other hand, there's no job, but you find they have assets which bring income. And we're going to look into more detail on that one. So now we want to look at the pattern of the poor. So as I said, the poor have a job, they earn an income, but immediately, all that money is spent on expenses. So these are examples. Maybe you have to pay a rental, you need to buy food, pay school fees for the kids. 
And before you know it, all the money is gone. So these people, they are hard workers. They often work more than one job just to make ends meet. So you'll find they probably have an eight to five job. After that, they are doing something else just so that they can make ends meet. So they have a hard time getting ahead because they just want to stay afloat. You normally hear them saying things like, I want to make enough money to pay my bills, or I just want enough to put food on the table, or I want enough money to send my kids to school. So they are staying afloat. All they are trying to do is to just stay afloat. So you may find them maybe doing smaller other businesses so that they can stay afloat. And they often think more money will solve all their problems. I hope I'm not stepping onto anyone's toes. <laughs> but yeah, that's the mindset of the poor. So they often think that the more money they have, the, the, the more their problems will disappear. But unfortunately, more money for them merely accentuates their spending habits. You actually see that if you give them more money, they spend even more. And that's the pattern of the poor. And what is so unfortunate about this is they have no assets. They also have no liabilities. So all their money, it just comes in and out it goes. Then we look at the pattern of the middle class. So most of the middle class, just like the poor, also live from paycheck to paycheck or from payday to payday or from hand to mouth. You know, and uh, oftentimes they are considered uh, that they are living the typical life. Some even call it a smart life. Most of these middle class have very good jobs, good jobs uh, that are high paying, and these jobs can afford them liabilities. Um, so you'd see on this one, now we are featuring liabilities. So they can afford to get a mortgage and buy a house. They can afford to get a loan and buy a car. They can even afford to go on holiday um, and all from credit, you know, they just get loans. And, and when you look at them from outside, they live such um, beautiful lives that we all want to emulate. We all feel this is the life. If we're in America, we'll be saying this is the American dream, right? <laughs> but yeah, so this is another pattern, the pattern of the middle class. And what is so outstanding about this class is liabilities. If they can't afford anything for cash, they simply use credit. There's a wedding tomorrow. They simply go to Edgar's or Truett's they buy the clothes on credit, off they go. So over time, they are building a lifestyle that must be maintained um, by either getting a higher paying job or they have to work longer hours to afford more liabilities. And as you can see, it can become a vicious cycle. So all the money that they get, they use it to get liabilities, which will create expenses and out of their life. And all of this is the way the cash is flowing. So we move on to the pattern of the rich. From the rich, you can see that a job is missing. So not to say we don't need jobs, but you will see, probably I'll share in the next slide, that a job is important because it can actually set the foundation for your wealth building. So the rich don't work for money. As I mentioned, the job is there to bring income, but for the rich, they don't work for money, but they use their money to acquire assets. And um, as I mentioned at the beginning, assets are what bring money into your life. So their assets give them passive income. And I will explain passive income in a bit, but just know that their assets give them passive income. So there are two main types of income. You may read more and you discover that there are more types, but I want to focus on these two main types of income. The first one being end income or active income. This is money that you earn in exchange um, for your time. So you have to show up at work. For example, I work. So I show up at, at the office from eight to five every day. And in exchange for that, I'm paid something. 
So active income means you have to work, you have to do something for you to earn that money. But the disadvantage of end income is that if you are sick, um, say you don't, if you're sick or maybe you, you, you get disabled and you can't use whatever it is you use to get money, if it's your hands and your hands um, maybe are paralyzed, then now you can't earn an income. That's the disadvantage of an active income. And also that as we grow older, we become um, economically inactive, if I can put it across that way. So active income, when you become inactive, it means no income is flowing into your life. Then there's a special one now, which is called passive income. And passive income is when your assets generate money while you sleep. Basically, that's what they do. So for example, if you own a house and you have tenants in your house, you get rental income. So you are basically getting money into your bank account while you're sleeping. You don't need to do much. Of course, you have to maybe maintain that asset, but you don't do as much. You don't have to be there from eight to five for you to get your rental income. So I want to stop here and just um, hear from you what um, other passive income that you can think of. What other passive income ideas can you think of? So I'll stop sharing so that I can see you. Um, I'll stop sharing. So I want to hear. You can type in the chat or if you want to speak out, you can speak. What are other examples of passive income? I don't see anything, but... Excellent. Yes, Stephanie. So writing books, when you have books, that is passive income. And I can even tell you the example. I have this book that I've written. Actually, both of them, I have them here. So as they are selling, I don't need to do anything anymore. Money just comes because I wrote this a long time ago. So that's a perfect example. Any other examples of passive income? And also if you're a musician, like my husband is a musician, he writes his music and money continues to come. So he doesn't have to keep singing. Money just uh, comes once. Anything else? Um, okay, so because of my time, I won't, I won't dwell there for long. Let me just uh, share my screen again. But yeah, we have a lot of examples of passive income. It can also be interest. So if you have money that you've uh, invested somewhere and you're earning interest, that becomes passive income. And that is the weapon of the rich in that they have assets which generate uh, passive income for them. And then from there, they, are, they can afford to spend. So... Um, what is next for you? I just want you after this to find time to prepare your own financial statement. And as I said earlier, that most of us are working jobs, day um, eight to five jobs. It's not bad at all because you can use that job as leverage to buy assets that will generate your income. And that can still sustain you way after you stop working. So sometimes you work a job because you, you, you need to get money to, to help your family, but we also have people who work because they just enjoy what they do. And oftentimes if you work because you want to get money to take your kids to school, as you age, you will retire. As you age, you'll be told, no, you can no longer serve in your capacity. Maybe um, you've been working as an officer and they say, now we need younger blood. They do that. Now we need younger people. And when that happens, it means you are out of a job. So when you're out of a job, do you have assets that can still generate income for you? Um, so there are so many different types. You can research more on these, on what kind of assets you can buy that can generate more income for you. They don't have to be expensive. It can be a small, uh, a small asset to start with and on and on um, it will go. 
So find time to prepare your own financial statement. Remember that we have the income statement. Show what uh, your sources of income. It could be your salary, could be profits from selling. I know some people sell Avon products, some sell Tupperware products, um, or you just sell anything else. It could be uh, food that you sell. You record that under your income. And then all your expenses, whatsoever expenses, you in care on a monthly basis, record them there. Then we look at your assets. You probably have some that you do not know. As I said, maybe you have a car uh, and it has not really been an asset if it's not bringing money into your life. But instead of parking your car at work from eight to five, how about you turn it into a taxi between eight and five? And then when you go home, you can now use it as your own transport. So only when an asset is give, when when your car is giving you money can we call it an asset. Otherwise, if it keeps pumping money out of you, it's a liability. Isn't it simple like that? So, which cash flow pattern have you been following? Uh, I don't want you to answer, but it's for you to think to think about it and say of the cash flow patterns that we have discussed today. I'll just go back here. Which one have you been following? Is it money comes in and out it goes? Or money comes in, it goes and gets liabilities which, uh, which create expenses and out it goes? Or you have assets that are generating income. But my recommendation is that we all buy assets. So in conclusion, I want to say, um, if you want to be added to my WhatsApp broadcast, broadcast list, please send me a WhatsApp message on that number. Uh, I also still have those two books that I'm selling and um, they are available. You can also reach out to me on WhatsApp. So this is, has been my presentation and I hope it has helped someone. Let me stop sharing. I hope it has helped. I'm also seeing a comment from Sydney. Say, so passive starts from active and graduates to passive at some point in time, correct? Correct. I, 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 I agree with you, Sydney, in that, as I said, sometimes you have to start from somewhere. So sometimes you have to have a job. You have to have a job. You have to do something for you to start accumulating those assets. You may start by saving, saving your money until it can buy you an asset. Even if you want to go on the stock market, you have to, to, to save first and then you buy in bulk. Maybe you want to start a farming business. You save first and then so from for you to save, it means you have to work somehow. So I agree with Sydney that you need to start from active and then you graduate to passive. And before you know it, um, you will just be enjoying the interest, the profits and on and on and on. So thank you so much guys for, for your time. Yes, uh, Stephanie, I appreciate you joining. Thank you so much. Um, unfortunately, I can't see all the names of the people that have joined, but I want to uh, appreciate your time. I see Manzini. Um, uh, okay, Tawanda, you want to ask a question? I see your hand is up. wanted to, to understand how liabilities and expenses link. I saw on one of your of your slides the arrow was going, going through liabilities and then to, to to expenses. Yes. So your question is uh, what 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 what's the link? Maybe if you can give an example of right. liability. Yes. What's the link? So what, what we, we said is the middle class, because it's the middle class who have uh, liabilities, right? You'd find that they use their money to get liabilities. So for example, they use the money to buy a car on credit. So a buy, to buy a, a car, uh, they get a loan. So a car loan is an example. So the car loan then creates their expenses. So it means every month they are having to pay for that car every month there. So the car loan has created that expense, the expense of the loan repayment. 
I hope it's clear. So that's the link that uh, the middle class, their income goes to get liabilities which create expenses and out it goes. I hope that's clear. Um, 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 I get the sense that being a middle class gives you a false sense of being rich because they are correct. offering loans, offering, you know, all these nice things that you have to pay for later. It's true. It's true. And um, I know I'll give one example. When, uh, when I start, I, when I got into my debt trap at some point in my life, the bank actually approached me and said, you qualify for this loan. And you know, when you're told you qualify, it's like something that is out of this world, like something that's so important. And little did I know that um, I was getting myself into this debt trap. So yes, it looks attractive. Um, and you can actually envy or fancy um, that kind of a lifestyle, but the debt cycle can actually be haunting those, uh, those people in the middle class. So thank you for that uh, comment and feedback, Tawanda. Um, so we have done our 30 minutes, but if there's any other question, I think I can still attend to that. Um, Zoom is giving us 10 more minutes, but I want to honor the 30 minutes I promised. Sydney, go for it. Thanks, thanks Nyari for the wonderful presentation. Uh, very enlightening. Um, so now after you have uh, given us all this information, there's something that uh, is still kind of uh, is gray to me. Um, okay. For a long time, I think uh, I, I used to have this clear distinction between assets and uh, liabilities. Right. Now, from the explanation that you gave, assets are those things that really bring an income. So uh, yeah. do we have kind of like another category in between where you have a kind of an asset, but it's not bringing money? So yeah. I don't know. <laughs> Yes, a very important question um, because I think I think there's always that um, like unbelief. I'm an accountant, so I have always believed that an asset is is it even your house is it, you know something that can last you more than five years or more than a year actually is an asset. And then we we now come to personal finance and we say no as long as it's not bringing money into your life, then it's not, um, it's not an asset. But yes, um, they, it's really up to you if you want to have something in between. We call it a neutral asset where it's not bringing money, it's not taking money out. And um, normally maybe what, I, I, I try to think of an example, maybe you talk of your, um, your house maybe, but a house is a bad example because as long as you're not getting any money from it, it still does not qualify as an asset. Um, it will fall under, under not a liability, <laughs> but maybe that middle section that you're saying. It's a liability in that it takes money out, but it's also not a liability in that at least you are staying in it, you're not having to pay uh, rental uh, elsewhere, things like that. So if you want, yes, we can have something in the middle, which is a neutral asset. But um, if we are to just stick to what I have said, yes, it's either an asset or a liability. And I would actually encourage that we have more assets than we will have them in between and the liabilities. Um, I hope I hope it, uh, it answers um, this. Um, Sorry, no, that's okay, Clara, I see. And then I was wondering if you have got some tips on what to invest in. So yeah, I would have some tips. I would actually encourage you to get this book. I think it's full of those. Um, and Tadiwa, I think I'll also try to do that, to do a, more of an article because of time. Uh, I don't want to rush it through. So I'll probably do it an article, but if you get this book, there are quite a lot of examples and especially uh, those that are relevant or relatable here in Africa. 
Um, so this one is on Amazon, Clara, but this one, it's not. This one, you have to get it straight from me. Tanda, I see you have a question. Um, your hand is up, you can, you can go for it. Okay, I, I, I just wanted to address uh, Sydney's question. Okay. Um, just to say, if whatever that, I will say asset, asset in court, um, mm -hmm. if it's just and you need to maintain it, then it's money is flowing out of that whatever asset in court. Mm -hmm. So it then becomes a liability because you're having to maintain it and no money is coming in. Mm -hmm. So it, it, to me, it, it would be an asset and it would be a liability. And it's very rare to find something that that's in just between. idle and there's no cash in. <laughs> uh, it's, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, yeah, thanks for that, Tawanda. It says it's quite difficult to find something that's just in between assets and liabilities. Um, yeah, thanks, thanks for that. So, guys, I have gone like four minutes over time, but it's fine because we also started like two minutes after after four. So allow me to say thank you. We can uh, have this discussion on, on WhatsApp or I can have a part two to this conversation if it's, if it's necessary. But I really want to thank you all for joining. Uh, enjoy the rest of your day. Goodbye.